Hello everyone and welcome to the feature presentation of the 2021 Karate BCE Tournament. Christopher Saito alongside Trevor Walmsley here with you in Vancouver, British Columbia for the second edition of the Karate BCE Tournament. Well, it has almost been a year since we hosted the first edition of the E-Tournament back in August of 2020. And since then, the light at the end of the tunnel is much, much closer. With the vaccine rollout going well across the country, with more and more restrictions being loosened in all parts of Canada on a daily basis, and more and more things opening back up. We are getting closer and closer to a place where we can all be together again at an in-person event, doing what we are all passionate about, competing, officiating, coaching, spectating, and organizing events just like this. Okay, thank you, Christopher, and hello, everyone. Um, so e even though we are getting close, uh, closer and closer, especially in, in British Columbia, we're opening more and more, um, we wanted to hold another e-tournament to, to give our members an opportunity to participate uh, before we've, we've finally reached the time when we can do things, these things the old-fashioned way. Um, so we've offered e-tournament number two, and we've expanded this year. We're having uh, Kabuto divisions as well as Kumite divisions, more of a, a Kumite skills divisions. Um, we've also uh, seen our numbers increase quite a lot over last year. Now we have um, well over 200 entries, 228 entries, uh, and people from across the country within BC and, and some of our friends from the U.S. as well. Thank you, Trevor, and we'll also be telling you the stories of karate athletes right across British Columbia as part of our new athlete feature segment. Dylan Thackeray of West Van Karate Academy in West Vancouver, British Columbia, and Tiffany Jaloka of Kuyu Kai Competition Club in Surrey, BC, will be featured as part of this broadcast. And these segments will air throughout the broadcast here at the 2021 Karate BC e-tournament. Let's take a look at the event categories that are included as part of this feature presentation. Starting us off is the boys 14-15 black belt cut division. Following that is the male-female 10-17 year old novice to advanced weapons cut division. And then a series of kumite divisions including the girls 14-15 advanced black belt, the boys 14-15 black belt, girls 16-17 advanced black belt, the boys 16-17 advanced black belt, the women's advanced category, the men's advanced black category, and then the boys 14-15 intermediate advanced. Then we'll go to the men's black belt cut division, and then to wrap off the afternoon, the women's black belt cut division. So before we get started, let me talk just a little bit about how the judging works. We're using five judges uh, for all of the divisions today, and each judge is going to give two scores, uh, one for the technical performance and the other score for the athletic performance. The uh, technical performance is made up of the sort of the karate basics, stances, breathing, transitional movements, uh, completing techniques, target, uh, a lot of, of karate basics. And the athletic performance is more speed and power and balance. Uh, the judges will score each of these and we'll remove the highest score uh, of each of the two scoring types and the lowest score and use the middle three scores uh, and we apply some math to those scores where we're weighting the technical score at 70 percent and the athletic score at 30 uh, percent. The intention of this uh, scoring system is to put more emphasis on uh, traditional kata. Uh, more emphasis on the techniques as they're performed and the athleticism is uh, still important uh, but a little bit more emphasis on proper karate. We'll be using this scoring system as well for the kumite. It applies just a little bit uh, a little bit differently but we're scoring very much in the same way. Thank you for that explanation Trevor and we'll take you to our first category of the afternoon, the boys 14-15 Black Belt Kata Division. There are three athletes in this division, the boys 14-15 Black Belt Kata, Derek Tamagi of Nikkei Karate, Emery Clark of Dimitrova Training Academy of Canada, and Nathan of Vancouver, Satoha Shitoru. This is... This is Derek Tamagi 
from Nikkei Karate performing the kata Basai Dai. Twenty two point eight zero points for Derek Tamagi. Next up is Emery Clark of Dimitrova Training Academy of Canada. Emery is from Campbell River, British Columbia, started karate when he was just six years old. Also enjoys playing basketball and mountain biking and kickboxing. Twenty two point eight eight points for Emery Clark, and that'll put him in first place in the division so far. This is Nathan Ng of Vancouver Satoha Shitoru. Nathan is the bronze medalist at in the male youth kata division at the 2019 Karate BC Provincials. And won gold in the same division at the BC Team Selections event just a few months after that.
24.42 points for Nathan, and so he'll take the gold medal. Nathan will take the gold with 24.42 points. Emery Clark taking the silver medal with 22.88 points. And the bronze medal goes to Derek Tamagi with a total score of 22.80 points. Well, we'd love to see how you're spending your Saturday afternoon watching the 2021 Karate BCE tournament. Whether you're at home in your living room watching this on your television, or maybe you're hosting a backyard barbecue viewing party with some family and friends because we can now do that. Or maybe you're on a road trip to someplace nice like Vancouver Island and you're watching from there. Send us your photos, your tweets using the hashtag KBCE Tournament on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or whatever social media platforms you use. We always love to hear from you. So now we're going to go to our first athlete feature. We interviewed uh, a couple of Karate BC athletes uh, to get to know them a little bit better and to help uh, you get to know them too. Tiffany Jaloka is a 14-year-old athlete from Kuyu Kai Competition Club in Surrey, British Columbia, and this is her story. My name is Tiffany Jaloka. I am 14 years old, and I attend karate at Kuyu Kai Karate Club. My hometown is Surrey, BC, and my coach's name is Julie Zilber. I started training karate when I was around seven years old, and I started training after seeing my dad just randomly doing some basic kicks and punches in our living room. It just seemed really fun to me, which I really enjoy doing fun things like anyone else, I guess. Um, so then my dad then put me into Kuyukai, the Kuyukai Karate Club so that I could continue training. And then I soon began to love the sport and just continued to pursue it up until now. During the tournament, well, the qualifiers for the BC team, since I didn't participate in the elite division in provincials, I knew I had to get at least first or second, um, which kind of put pressure on me. But when I found out that I managed to play second in the qualifiers, I was ecstatic. It was um, one of the best experiences in my life because um, even though it, my goal of making the BC team was just recent, it really inspired me to continue on my karate journey. Despite making the BC team, I wasn't able to compete in nationals due to the pandemic. It was very disappointing and upsetting to me, but it actually gave me a new opportunity to learn new katas and grow my skills as a karate athlete, which I think could be an actual blessing in disguise. Uh, my name is Ray Jaloka. I am the uh, dad of Tiffany Jaloka, a member of the BC team. And I started um, practicing karate when I was 15 years old. And I would say that was way back in 1986. She's a good daughter, a good sister, a good student. And she's able to balance uh, her uh, studies with karate. So as she mentioned, she's uh, in the honor roll. She's in the gold honor roll. So, and, and I think uh, uh, that's a good thing. And she's also ambitious. She wants to be a, a lawyer one day, just like her mom. Or um, an option also is that she wants to um, do sports medicine. So because she's very much into sports and she wants also to be a doctor. So, and she's also taking time teaching her younger brother with what uh, she knows about karate, like what Sensei Julie is teaching her or what I've been teaching her. So she's, she passes on to her brother and um, she wants to um, share her achievement with others, not just with her brother, but as well as with the other members of our dojo. So like every time we have uh, classes in the dojo and then she was just fresh from a tournament and then she won a medal and she would uh, teach the other students how she did it, um, giving some motivational talk and um, like also giving them some coaching tips. So, um, I think that's uh, uh, one trait of Tiffany that I really admire. And she, she just loves to like share what, what she learns from other people. So um, I, I think it was her first Canada Open uh, tournament participation. And she was really, really nervous. And like one week prior to the tournament, she wanted to back out. But I encouraged her to uh, keep going and then told her like, of course, I want her to win. 
but I don't expect her to win. But it ended up she won. So for I think it's for three straight years, four straight years, she's been uh, winning in her division in uh, Canada Open tournament. And sometimes uh, I would just be uh, surprised when I wake up, I don't see her inside her bedroom, and then only to find out she's inside the garage here, uh, practicing and doing her strengthening, doing her stretching, practicing her kata. So I think um, that attitude, that uh, that drive, that motivation would help her achieve her goals in competing in the nationals and maybe even beyond the nationals, she would be able to make it in uh, in world tournaments. My name is Julie Zilber and I am Tiffany Jaloka's coach at the Kuyukai Competition Club. Tiffany is a delight to work with. She is determined, she is positive, I have never heard uh, another athlete that I've worked with verbally articulate as much positive self-talk as Tiffany does. Uh, She is really eager to learn. She, She is voracious for input and information. And she will ask, if she wants to know something, she will ask it, uh, which is great. And she keeps me on my toes. Tiffany has a lot of strengths as a karate athlete. Obviously, you need some physical, natural ability to really excel at any sport. And Tiffany has that potential. But added to that is her determination to work and improve. And I think that belief in herself that she can do it and that she will be able to do it if she just works on it and she will try something over and over and over until she gets it. And that is probably her biggest strength as a karate athlete. When I first started coaching Tiffany, I thought she was a shy little girl and she, she always, she wouldn't look at me and she uh, never responded when I said things to her. And I asked her about that recently because I said, you know, Tiffany, when I met you, you were really shy. And she told me she was terrified by me, that she was really scared. (laughs) And I thought, really, I'm terrifying. But, uh, Obviously, I saw uh, at that time a girl and now a young woman who was working really hard and really trying to push herself. And I could see that that effort was there. And I said, you know, if, if Tiffany gets some good coaching, she can be really great. I participated in the 2020 BC Winter Games. At the start of the BC Winter Games tournament, it was pretty awkward for me seeing as I didn't know anyone else that was there. But after some time, I managed to bond with the rest of my zone and some people in other sports like skating and other winter sports that were there. And I actually got recognized by the Surrey MP. The Surrey MP uh, mailed us a certificate and a letter saying that he wished to meet me in person if it weren't due to the restrictions. So that was nice to know, very um, touching. When we uh, went to uh, Fort St. John for the BC Winter Games, it was, uh, of course, at first I was anxious because for the first time I'm going to let my daughter travel without me. So she had to be independent. She has to be on her own, but, she did it and uh, she was able to meet new friends and um, sh- she gave her best. And like watching her perform was, uh, I, I had like mixed emotions while watching her because I was nervous, I was proud. I don't know if um, how she's going to take it if she didn't win because it's like a once in a lifetime experience and once in a lifetime achievement. And after she won the, uh, the uh, Winter Games in Canada, uh, we were so proud, we were so um, excited. Well, I want to be able to compete in nationals in the future and even farther into the future, hopefully the Olympics. And 
other international tournaments like Pan Am and the WKF. I believe that if Tiffany keeps working and improving the way she has been, and obviously there will be ups and downs, but there's really no limit to what she can do as a karate athlete. Coming up next is a weapons category, the male-female 10 to 17-year-old novice to advanced division. Trevor, tell us a little bit about the history of Kabuto and a little bit about weapons kata. Okay, well, Kabuto and, and karate go back together kind of hand in hand um, historically. In fact, uh, they, they used to be taught together. One of my uh, first ever Kabuto instructors said that they were like uh, two wheels on the same cart. Um, certainly the, the connection is there. And, and in the past, there, Kabuto wasn't even considered a separate discipline. Uh, even developing um, belt levels for Kabuto was, is kind of a new idea. Uh, it's only more recently that we're starting to see some uh, groups create Kihon Kata uh, or basic Kata for Kabuto and even developing a color belt system. In the past, there, that sort of thing really wasn't there. So Kabuto has always been a little bit more informal, uh, but it is a lot of fun for a karate practitioner, something uh, that I certainly enjoy to do. Thank you for that, Trevor, and we'll be excited to see the next division, which is the male-female 10 to 17-year-old novice to advanced weapons kata division. There are five athletes in this weapons division. Buffy Lamb will start us off, then Derek Tamagi, Emery Clark, followed by Jenna Scott and Tiffany Jaloka. This is Buffy Lamb from Poco Karate. and 18.42 points for Buffy Lamb. Next up is Derek Tamaki from Nikkei Karate. The weapon that Derek is using in this kata is called a bow, meaning stick in Japanese. Nineteen point three two points for Derek, and that'll put him in first place so far in the division. Up next is Emery Clark of Dimitrova Training Academy of Canada.
20.88 points for Emery Clark, and that'll put him in the lead in this 10 to 17 year old division. Next up is Jenna Scott, also from Dimitrova Training Academy of Canada. twenty two point zero two points for Jenna Scott to take the lead in this division. Last but not least is Tiffany Jaloka of Kuyu Kai Competition Club. Twenty one point six eight points for Tiffany, and so she'll finish second in this division. Taking the gold medal is Jenna Scott with twenty two point two two points. The silver medal medal goes to Tiffany Jaloka, and Emery Clark will take the bronze medal with twenty point eight eight points. Welcome back, everyone. To all of our medalists here who won a medal here at the 2021 Karate BC E tournament, you can expect your medals to arrive in the mail in the, in the next few weeks. And once you receive your medals, make sure to use the hashtag KBC E tournament. Take a photo, post it on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever platforms that you use. We'd love to see your photos with your medal in hand or around your neck. We always love hearing from our viewers. Next up will be the series of Kumite uh, divisions. First up, the girls 14-15 advanced black belt, followed by the boys 14-15 black belt. Then the girls 16-17 ad advanced black belt, the boys 16-17 advanced black belt. Then the women's advanced and the men's advanced black belt division. Now, Trevor, tell us a little bit about how Kumite uh, is going to work in the context of an e-tournament. Yeah, so normally uh, in Kumite, we have an opponent and you square off in the ring and figure each other out and, and find your way to score and, and not be scored upon. We haven't had the opportunity to do that because of the public health situation uh, for quite a long time. But we wanted to include a portion in this event for the Kumite competitors. So what we've done is uh, created sort of a Kumite skills competition where the competitors will practice uh, kumite combinations 
against uh, a fixed target. The judges will score this similarly to the way they score kata, looking uh, at techniques and at athleticism. They'll also be looking for effective combinations and, and techniques that look like they would actually score against a live opponent. Thank you for that, Trevor. We'll go to our first Kumite division, the girls 14-15 advanced black belt. Two athletes in this division, Tiffany Jaloka of Kuyukai Competition Club and Yumi Nakatsu. This is Tiffany Jaloka. Started karate when she was just seven years old. She is the gold medalist in the Advanced Girls Kata Division at the 2021 BC Winter Games in Fort St. John, BC. 22.46 points in this event. This is Yumi Nakatsu. Twenty two point twenty two points for Yumi Nakatsu, and she'll, she'll take the silver medal, and the gold medal goes to Tiffany Jaloko with a total of twenty two point four six points. The starting order for the boys fourteen fifteen black belt Kumite division Derek Tamagi will start us off, followed by Emery Clark of Dimitrova Training Academy of Canada. Hi, Damn it. Twenty one point four eight points for Derek Tamagi. Next up is Emery Clark. Hajime. Twenty two point four two points for Emery Clark, and so he'll take the gold medal in this boys fourteen fifteen black belt Kumite division, and the silver medal goes to Derek Tamagi with a total score of twenty one point four eight points. In the girls sixteen seventeen advanced black belt Kumite division is Phoebe Karan of International Karate Federation and Jenna Scott of Dimitrova Training Academy of Canada. Twenty two point one zero points for Phoebe Karan of International Karate Federation. Next is Jenna Scott from Dimitrova Training Academy of Canada. Jenna Scott is the gold medalist in the female cadet plus fifty four kilogram division at the two thousand nineteen 
Karate BC Provincials. Twenty three points for Jenna Scott, and so she'll take the gold medal in this division, and the silver medal goes to Phoebe Curran of International Karate Federation with a total score of twenty two point one zero points. The next category is the boys sixteen seventeen advanced black belt kumite division. Henry Adams from Feminist Karate Union will start us off, followed by Isaac Naumenko of Vancouver Satohashitoryu. And 21.82 points for Henry Adams of Feminist Karate Union. Next up is Isaac Naumenko. Ten. Fifteen. Isaac won two silver medals at the 2019 Karate BC Provincials. And 22.66 points for Isaac, and he'll take the gold medal in this boys 16-17 division, and Henry Adams will take the silver medal with 21.82 points. Up next is the Women's Advanced Kumite Division. First up is Megan Wiebe of Deep Cove Kimura Shukokai Karate, followed by Pamela Westinghouse and Joanna Power. First up is Megan Wiebe of Deep Cove Kimura Shukokai Karate. Ten. Twenty point two four points for Megan Wiebe of Deep Cove Kimura Shikokai Karate. Up next is Pamela Westinghouse, also from Deep Cove Kimura Shikokai Karate. <laughs> Nineteen point three zero points for Pamela Westinghouse, and that'll put her in second place in this women's advanced division. Next is Joanna Power from International Karate Federation. Twenty-one point twenty-two points for Joanna Power, and she'll finish first in this division, taking home the gold medal. Megan Wiebe will take home the silver medal with twenty point two four points, and the bronze medal goes to Pamela Westinghouse. The next category is the men's advanced black belt kumite division. Mark Lowe from Canada, Shoseikan Richmond Oval, and Gabriel Wilkinson from Princeton. Renshikan Shitoryu Karate Club. Hey! Up first is Mark hey! Lowe. Hey! 
21.54 points for Mark Lowe of Canada, Shosekan, Richmond Oval. The second competitor in this division is Gabriel Wilkinson from Princeton, Renshkan Chitoryu Karate Club. Gabriel is the bronze medalist in the male junior kata division at the 2019 Karate BC Provincials. And also finished fourth in that same division in the BC team selections tournament. 22.58 points for Gabriel Wilkinson, and so he'll take home the gold medal in this men's advanced black belt division. And the silver medal goes to Mark Lowe with a total score of 21. Point five four points. Welcome back, everyone. Don't forget about the hashtag, hashtag KBCE tournament. Send us your photos. Tell us maybe a little bit about what you're eating or drinking while you're watching the 2021 Karate BCE tournament. Send us your photos, your tweets, post on Facebook, any other social media platforms you use. We always love hearing from our viewers. It's now time for our second athlete feature segment. Dylan Thackeray is a 14-year-old athlete from West Van Karate Academy in West Vancouver, British Columbia. And this is his story. My name is Dylan Thackeray. I'm 14 years old and I live in West Vancouver, BC. My dojo is West Van Karate Academy and my sensei is Matt Bickle. Um, I started training in karate about five and a half years ago. Uh, what made me start was... Um, Matt Bickle came, Sensei Matt Bickle came to my school when I was in about grade two or three, and he gave everyone a karate demonstration as well as um, like what it means to be a karate athlete. And I like overall from his presentation, I really enjoyed it. And that's what made me want to start karate. Something that really clicked for me when during uh, his de sensei Matt's demonstration uh, that made me want to start doing karate was the fact that like the level of his punches and kicks and techniques and everything that he did it just it was such a high level and well also the fact that he did a backflip off a wall <laughs> was pretty pretty insane too I'm like what I want to I want to learn how to have the core strength to do that and the courage as well my name is Karen Fowley and I'm Dylan's mom. Dylan is an outgoing kid. He's really great with people. Um, he really likes to uh, chat with the other um, people and help bring them together. Um, he's, uh, he volunteers his time. He senpais um, the younger children uh, a couple of times a week and um, it just shows how like, open he is with the other kids and encouraging he really likes to encourage the younger kids to to be their best and and to try as hard as they can so he's definitely an outgoing and positive individual i usually train uh about four times a week i've been on the bc team for about a year right right now when i first found out that i made the bc team for the first time um, I def I felt like excitement, joy, and just a little bit of nervousness because just like uh, I wasn't sure of what was to come next, like it, in terms of experience. But I was really excited for what was coming ahead, and that I moved on from from the or yeah that I made it onto the BC team. So, yeah, it was mainly just, like, major excitement and happiness and, yeah. My full name is Matthew Bickle, um, and I am Dylan Thackeray's coach and sensei for about the past uh, six years, I think, now. I've coached him since he was, I believe, he started when he was eight years old. And my first impression of him um, was that he was very, very positive, uh, a little bit goofy, but a very hard worker and uh, just a fun student to have in the class. Uh, literally every opportunity or uh, training event that we have available for Dylan, he's always in attendance and makes it a priority to be there. And yeah, he just, he also gives back a lot. So he'll help out with the dojo. He'll help some, teach some classes, mentor some younger students. 
Um, and yeah, just a very good person to have. I think what makes Dylan a great karate athlete is that he really doesn't have any fear. So, you know, some people they're nervous to fight in front of an audience or they'll be nervous to fight or train with a harder or more experienced opponent. Um, but Dylan doesn't have that. And I think um, that allows him to push himself to get better every training, every competition, he's not afraid. And that's something that you, is hard to teach someone. So when they have that um, insight by themselves, it's very good. Um, and I, I think also he's just the amount that he's willing to endure in training, um, suffering, if you will. Um, he never backs down from a challenge and that really boosts him and helps him to grow. Um, a future goal for inside karate is definitely to become, to get back on the BC team and go for nationals and hopefully maybe like someday internationals. Cause that would be, that would be super fun to do an in, do international fights. And well, something that karate has taught about, taught me about myself is I've gone to different tournaments and events is the fact that if I keep training and persevering and enduring to in the same technique and like the same category I will get stronger depending on how I train in it if I'm just like once in a while I'm, I'm training in this category it's not going to look as good as if like compared to if I consistently and constantly trained uh, trained and trained and trained in that category and and uh, stop at the same time like I think it would like it would pale in comparison to that so just perseverance is key for becoming stronger in technique and at pretty much any category or focus that you have if you want to get stronger mentally or physically in a category just perseverance and endurance is definitely key for that type of thing I think based on his heart and his desire to improve, I think he can go far. Um, it's always, you know, the coach can only do so much. Um, and at the end of the day, it's up to an athlete. So regardless of what tools or techniques an athlete starts with, I would say the most important thing is that they have to have the passion themselves and the love and be willing to do the work on their own time to make um, their dreams come true. So because of that, I think Dylan can go far. He's willing to work hard. He's always positive. He's extremely coachable uh, and he, he never misses a training opportunity. So with those things, he can go very far. Dylan's potential is as big as his dreams. And he really works hard at what he wants to focus on. He really will um, devote a lot of time and effort. And so I'm really happy that um, he pursued karate uh, and martial arts. It's brought so many positive aspects um, into our life, um, into our lives. And I believe his potential is limitless as he goes out and decides how he wants to live as an adult. I'm sure that he will have learned a lot of life lessons from his time in karate, a lot of humility and patience and perseverance and striving to be the best person he can be. Welcome back everyone. Let's take a look at the schedule for the rest of the three categories. Next is the boys 14-15 intermediate advanced kumite division followed by the men's black belt kata division and then to wrap up the event is the women's black belt kata division. Now, Trevor, tell us a little bit about the difference between competing in an in-person event versus competing in an online event or an e-tournament like this one from an athlete's point of view. So I think that uh, all of our participants today and in other e-tournaments, including our first e-tournament a year ago, uh, will have experienced this when you when you compete at an in-person event as soon as you walk into the to the venue as soon as you walk into the room you immediately can feel the energy of the day um there's a buzz in the room uh i feel it every time i step into a venue even uh, though i haven't competed now for a while uh, but even as a referee you feel it too 
you walk in there, we're all there for the competition and there's an excitement. Um, you'll start to see your competitors um, and be training around them and they're getting psyched up, you're getting psyched up. There's a, a lot of energy to feed off of and you maybe you a few of them will go before you and you'll see them and a few of them will go after you and you'll see them. Um, so there's, uh, there's a, a lot to, to work with and for those uh, you know, for these events, like today, the competitors are often doing this in isolation. Maybe you've had the chance to train or to film your performances at your dojo with maybe a few of your classmates uh, if you're um, younger um, and maybe with your coach. Uh, but you, you don't have the same uh, feedback, the same input. So the competitors in this context need to really find it within themselves. Uh, even more so than normal, uh, to pull out the energy to show in their performance. I think that we've seen a lot of that today. I think we've seen a lot of heart, a lot of effort, um, and, and many great performances from everyone who's been involved. Thanks, Trevor. Next up, we'll take you to the boys' 14-15 Intermediate Advanced Kumite Division. Four competitors in the boys' 14-15 Intermediate Advanced Kumite Division, Jericho Martinez, Robert Salter Hernandez, Samuel Borsellino, and Dylan Thackeray. Hazume! This is Jericho Martinez of Nikkei Karate. Yummy! And 21.96 points for Jericho Martinez. Next up is Robert Salter Hernandez of West Shore Kimura Shukokai. Hajime. Love the mask there on, on Bob. This is the sort of thing that people 50 years from now would be looking back and wondering why that's there. Yeah, me. 20.66 points for Robert Salter Hernandez, and that puts him in second place so far in the boys' 14-15 Intermediate Advanced Division. This is Samuel Borsellino, also from West Shore Kimura Shikokai. Also see the mask on Bob here as well. And hopefully people 50 years yeah, from now mate. would be still looking at this, watching this event. 21.94 points for Samuel Borsellino. And he'll be in second place so far in this division. This is Dylan Thackeray of West Van Karate Academy. Which we've all met in the athlete feature segment. He's on the Karate BC team in the minus 55 kilogram youth division. But none of the athletes in that BC team group had the chance to compete at nationals, of course, with COVID cancelling all, virtually all events across the nation, and 22.54 points for Dylan Thackeray, and so he'll take the gold medal in this division. The silver medal goes to Jericho Martinez of Nikkei Karate with a total score of 21.96 points, and Samuel Borsellino is the bronze medalist from West Shore Kimura Shikokai. The next division is the Men's Black Belt Kata Division. Ka Man Ma of Bright Martial Arts and Fitness will start us off, followed by Kimar Arakaki Neves, then Robert Stenson, and Gabriel Wilkinson. This is Ka Man Ma of Bright Martial Arts and Fitness.
20.62 points for Ka Man Ma of Bright Martial Arts and Fitness. The next athlete is Kimar Arakaki Neves of West Coast Gojukai. And 20.68 points for Kimar Arakaki Neves of West Coast Gojukai. Next up is Robert Stenson of Kamloops Renshikan Karate Do. Eighteen point six two points for Robert Stenson, and so that'll put him in third place so far in this division. Fourth on the list is Gabriel Wilkinson of Princeton Renshikan Shitoryu Karate Club.
22.34 points for Gabriel Wilkinson. And so he'll take home the gold medal in the men's black belt kata division. The silver medal goes to Kimar Arakaki Neves with a total score of 20.68 points. And by a difference of 0 0.06 points, the bronze medal goes to Ka Man Ma of Bright Martial Arts and Fitness. The last category of the event is the women's black belt kata division. Sarah Hydes of Kask Shiai Karate School, James Bay, will start us off, followed by Ashley Ng of Vancouver Sato Hashitoryu, then Siobhan Da, Maya Klen, Annie Lee, and Nia Laos Lu, followed by Zuzana Leitmanova. This is Sarah Hydes from Kask Shiai Karate School in James Bay. Total score of 20.86 points for Sarah Hydes. Next up is Ashlyn Ng from Vancouver Satoha Shitoryu. Ashlyn is the silver medalist in the female junior kata category at the 2019 Karate BC Provincials, and is also the bronze medalist in the female cadet kata division at the 2019 Junior National Championships that were held in Edmonton, Alberta, of course, the last national that was able to be done before COVID stopped everything. Hopefully things will be different next year with the next edition of the Karate Canada National Championship scheduled for July of 2022.
23.46 points for Ashlyn Ng, and that'll put her in first place so far in the women's black belt division. This is Siobhan Da of Victoria Renshikan Karate, performing the Kata Basai Dai. Basai Dai! Basai Dai is, of course, a very popular Kata performed by many competitors at events like this. And 19.94 points for Siobhan Da of Victoria Renchkan Karate. And so she'll be in third place so far in this division. Next is Maya Klen from Nikkei Karate. twenty two point four six points for Maya Klen. So that'll that'll put her in second place just behind Ashlyn. Next to perform is Annie Lee. Who's so good?
21.94 points for Annie Lee, which puts her in third place in this division so far. Second to last competitor in this division is Nia Laos Lu from Nikkei Karate. Twenty three point five four points for Nia Laos Lu. And she'll and that'll put her at the top of the list here in the women's black belt division. Last but not least, Susanna Late Manova.
22, point, 22 points for Zuzana Leitmanova, and so it'll be a fourth place finish for her in the women's black belt division. Taking home the gold medal is Nia Laos Lu with 23.54 points. The silver medal goes to Ashlyn Ng, and the bronze medal goes to Maya Klen with a total score of 22.46 points. Well, it has been an amazing day of competition here with 228 entries from 158 athletes at the 2021 Karate BCE Tournament, and we thank each and every one of you for participating. And to all of our medalists who won a medal here today at the event, keep checking your mailboxes because you'll be receiving your medals in the next few weeks. And when you do, make sure to take a photo and use the hashtag KBCE Tournament. Send us your photos, your tweets on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and any other social media platforms that you use. And on behalf of all of us here at Karate BC, I would like to thank all of the judges for lending us their time and expertise in judging all of our 158 competitors. To our staff back at Karate BC, and most importantly, all of you, our viewers, for inviting us into your homes and living rooms for the past few hours. Well, I'd just like to say thank you as well to everyone. Uh, who's participated. Of course, my thank you to all of the, the judges uh, from near and far. We had friends uh, join us from across the country and, and some of our friends from the U.S. as well. And I'd like to thank all of you. I'd like to, to thank all of the athletes. Once again, I enjoyed very much uh, watching all of your performances. It's good to see that uh, karate is alive and well. Uh, we have continued to go through this um, rather long I guess about a year and a half now that we've been going through this. Um, but as Christopher mentioned early on, the light at the end of the tunnel is becoming brighter and brighter. We are now returning to the dojo um, and able to train together. And uh, we can expect if things keep going this way that we will all be together again soon. And uh, I very much look forward to seeing all of you um, in the very near future. So all the best, and uh, have a great summer. Thank you for watching.